huge thing is what's going on in Germany right now. Thousands and thousands of trucks and tractors and and joined by the Poles, joined by in the Netherlands, soon to be joined by a lot of French, soon to be joined, as I predicted in the past, the Italians and a lot of Europeans. These governments, the, the, the reckoning of the EU is at hand. The reckoning of NATO is at hand as well, given the things that they have been doing by proxy in Ukraine. Ukraine is going to be defeated this year. Russia is going to absorb back into the Russian world all the provinces uh, and this experiment, except for the Western Ukrainians. And this experiment in uh, independence for Ukraine is, is going to finally be exposed for what it is. It is an artificial nation. Um, I mean, I'm not judging it. I'm just stating a fact and history is going to prove it right. You have a nation that had all these people forced to live in it before it was a nation, when it was just a Soviet socialist republic. A lot of people were from land grabs like Western Ukraine, Lenin forcing all the Donbass Russians and crime, and then Khrushchev forcing the Russians in Crimea to be a part of Ukraine. They've never been a part of Ukraine. I mean, that's this is not how nations are born. Nations are not born because people are forced by other nations to throw themselves into a big group and then find themselves all in the ethnically, culturally diverse people that never asked to be part of this thing called Ukraina, which means borderland. I mean, your country's name is borderland. Does that, can a country be called a frontier? I mean, and so even the name shows that this is not working. And so, then you get one group of nationalists that believe they should rule all the other people there. This is not going to work. It, it, I've been talking about this since before 2014 when all this happened. Ukraine will break up because this is unnatural. These, these people have not consented to live the once 32 million people who live there. Now it's down to 22 or even less. They did not consent to be there. All those men that left and didn't want to join in the armies, good. It reminds me of something that Ruth Montgomery used to talk about through her channeling books. She talked about how, I'm going to write something about this, maybe in the 2024 thing, I'll talk about it a bit. I'll introduce her prophecy because she had these guides that gave her prophecies and some of them pretty accurate, some of them not, but it was an interesting read. I learned a lot processing what she was doing in the 90s and 80s when she talked about there'd come a, a time where there'd be a lot of peace because there'd be a lot of a whole generation of people who just wouldn't be interested in going to war and just they just won't they will literally be the people who said what if somebody declared a war and nobody came well i these people are here whether they are the incarnates returned from the hundred years war it's, that's what she thought i Frankly, there were not enough people living and dying in those hundred years to have such a big impact. So even when I was reading, I said, well, that's just mathematically not, even if they're coming back from there, uh, I think it's a bigger area they're coming back. I, I mean, I, I'll tell you that one of the reasons why the George, uh, the uh, Gerald Ford steamed away from Hezbollah's coastline is that there's there are 600 sailors short of, a, of an effective crew. The British are decommissioning ships because they can't crew them. The United States is beginning to do the same because recruitment in the, in the annals of military history, recruitment has never been this bad in the West. And I'm glad, <laughs> frankly, if there'll come a time if we have to fight in wars again, then people will stand up, but they'll stand up to fight because they have to. They're not going to go. I mean, this is the karma, the reckoning of all these 32 years of the American hegemonic power, where all those brave young men and women of America went to fight for corporate interests, not for this country's needs and defense. And that's why so many of them are messed up, because they were they were fighting a fraud. They were fighting and dying. As the Zionists want, Netanyahu and all, they, they've been wanting America to fight and die destroying Iran. 
they got away with it with Iraq. They tried to pull them in in Syria because, I mean, I understand a small country if it's got a big dumb friend who's ready to stick its face right in the middle of a meat grinder. Um, you know, it's, uh, yeah, okay, uh, I got my big dumb friend. We're small. We're, you know, we have a lot of powers and stuff. It'll only take a few atomic bombs to wipe us or uh, 2,000 Shahab missiles from Iran to wipe us off the face of the earth. So we, and we can't attack Iran and can't attack Syria and can't really effectively take out Saddam Hussein. So we got our big dumb friend, the United States, to go there. Okay, I'll go get him. Oh, you said it. Bin Laden was Bin Laden was in, in cahoots with Sodom. All right, I'll go. I won't question that because I I'm hero worship all you folks in Israel and and just go stumbling off into uh, adventures. It gets a lot of Iraqis killed and a lot of Americans killed and wounded and damaged, war psychosis and all kinds of things. Well, uh, thirty years of that has sunk in, and. I, I I agree with the men and women who are saying, screw this. I'm not going out there. That's wake that's people waking up. I said, I'd rather actually pursue why don't why don't we fight this problem where I can't I don't have I can't make enough money to have what my parents had? Why are we giving it all to Israel? Why are we giving it all to Ukraine? I mean, this is not this is a this is a beyond partisan issue. Every American, whatever their identity is in politics. You know, why aren't we spending more time just making a budget that defends this country and not defends a corporate cabal that wants to put a weapon everywhere in America where the in the world where the sun never sets upon it and, and a budget that is killing us economically? Uh, I mean, people want to badmouth all the addicts in the streets and all of that that is going on. Well, that's what happens when you send all the money off to these adventures, when you start fighting the wars that your so-called friends can't fight, but you're too stupid to see that, and you, you're, or you're just looking the other way because you're just trying to get through your life. Um, but, you know, so another reckoning is, the reckoning is the American people need to return to their responsibilities for this because... I will speak ill of you and myself. We have not done our part that the founding fathers and citizens of this country always did. Always make the people you send to Washington always afraid of you, not the other way around. Now they, they don't, they're not afraid of us. You create in Europe a technocratic dictatorship where the people have no voice. You have this new aristocracy in Brussels, uh, the EU aristocracy, the EU parliament that literally don't give a hoot about you. It's Versailles has been rebuilt in the Tower of Babel, that round building that looks like the Tower of ba Babel. It's all round and partly unconstructed, just like the Hermionus Bosch painting. Um, I think somebody had a real sense of humor with design, design that thing. Those truckers that are stopping things happening in Berlin all across that, this is the beginning as Pluto moves away from supporting the establishment and more towards supporting a revolution to reform the establishment, which is the big thing that's coming. This year is the shift. This year is where that starts happening. And I know as a lot of people feel very powerless that this whole way the world is kind of being shut down, that the, the elites are literally trying to take our freedoms away, our humanity away, you know, to kind of turn us into serfs. Yeah, they really want to do that. But here's the good news. This happened before in a smaller way. It happened when Pluto started its transit in the birth of America. That was the peak of the aristocratic world as it was at its peak at that time. They were warring against each other. They were all not just one, but they had control over the plebs, the lower classes. But a middle class started to emerge in Europe and Britain and in the Amer in British colonies in America. And they like this new cash cow. Hey, you know, there's these people are industrious. They're giving us more money. We can build more palaces. But at a certain point, the people in the middle classes then said, no, you guys, are, you're taking too much of the wealth. You're, you've forgotten we even exist. You don't care about us, hate us. You'd rather see us die or starve and stuff. And 
God damn it. We they rose up then because that's what this energy in Pluto is starting to do now between 2024 and especially peaking in 2034 to 36 when the Pluto return of the French Revolution is on. But but this will be much faster and much more of this happening because there's more of us, there's more intensity into it. So these globalists and people, the, they, these movements they are doing to suppress us, to shadow ban us, to try to control us is going to backfire. It might finally speak, uh, speaking ill to us citizens wake us up to our responsibility and when we see our mistakes of letting our governments be overtaken over time by people who don't care about us who don't honor our constitutional rights it is this not a left or right thing this is for everybody um so this begins in this year um and what i see is going to be the repeat of what happened 248 years ago, right when the aristocracy was at its peak, when Klaus Schwab and his characters are in Davos at their peak, their era is done. It's all downhill for them now.